pitches a ball at over 90 miles an hour. Who cares? All that means is he can have a wank faster. I die, yeah. I'm worse than till I die. Yeah. I know I am, I'm sure all right, I am. All right, all right. The movie starts with a chaotic scene in the London subway, where the Green State top football group clashes with their rivals, the Yids, exchanging insults and blows. Then, we're taken to Cambridge, Massachusetts, where Matt Bunker, a Harvard student studying journalism, faces expulsion from the university due to false accusations of cocaine possession by his roommate, Jeremy. With only two weeks until graduation and a promising journalism career ahead, Matt chooses not to defend himself, resulting in his expulsion. Jeremy, politically inclined, offers Matt a $10,000 bribe for his troubles, which Matt refuses. Unable to reach his father, a renowned journalist on assignment in Afghanistan, Matt heads to London to visit his sister Shannon, her husband Steve, and their son Ben. Upon arrival, Matt is struck by the fervor surrounding football in London, and Shannon warns him not to call it soccer. At Shannon's place, Steve has different plans for the evening with Shannon. When his older brother Pete, who leads the Green Steel Elite, shows up, Matt is tempted with a bribe to go with him to the West Ham football match in exchange for cash and a ride. Despite some reservations, Pete brings Matt along after offering him money. Steve advises Matt to keep the cash from Pete and use it at the pub for drinks, cautioning Pete not to harm Matt during their journey. Pete attempts to haggle for half of the money, but Matt declines. In a scuffle, Matt tries to attack Pete but is swiftly overpowered and left on the ground. However, Pete takes a liking to Matt and decides to keep him around. Inside GC's local pub, the Abbey, Pete instructs Matt to keep quiet about his father's profession as a journalist and his American nationality as they aren't well received by the gang. Despite initial tensions, Matt fits in with the GC and is even dubbed the Karate Kid. However, Bover, Pete's right-hand man, doesn't warm up to Matt and tells him to leave. Despite this, Pete insists that Matt join them for the game. As they march towards West Ham Stadium, the firm chants their anthem, I'm forever blowing bubbles, and sings together during the match. Bover provokes the opposing team, the Brimmers, who were eager for a fight after the game. After the match, Matt heads towards Shannon's place but is pursued by the Brimmers. The GSC steps in just in time to rescue him from harm, leading to a violent confrontation. As Matt prepares to leave, Pete advises him to stand his ground in a fight and focus on someone he despises. Matt admits his lack of fighting skills, but Pete insists on focusing on someone he hates. After a tough brawl, Matt emerges bruised but with a clear mind. When asked about his opponent, he reveals it was someone named Jeremy. Despite the beating, Matt earns the favor of the firm, except for Bover. He spends the night at Pete's, who informs him about the firm's main rival, Millwall, and their decade-long feud stemming from a tragic event involving the son of Millwall's leader. Pete emphasizes the importance of reputation and recounts the story of the firm's former leader, the Major, who had an exemplary reputation. The next morning, upon seeing Matt's condition, Steve clashes with Pete. Matt attempts to mediate, leading to a physical confrontation. Eventually, he opts to stay with Petey, leaving Shannon upset with Steve for creating family discord. Upon entering the Abbey, Bovar insults Matt and Petey by insinuating they're a couple, nearly sparking another fight. Despite Shannon's pleas for him to stay, Matt chooses to remain with Petey. Shannon tries to dissuade Matt from associating with the firm, but he retorts, mentioning her absence after their mother's death. Despite their argument, they reconcile, revealing the complexities of the Bunker family. On a rooftop, Matt confides in Petey about his expulsion from Harvard and Jeremy's betrayal. Petey expresses a desire for revenge on Jeremy. When asked about his major, Matt, unaware of Petey's disdain for journalists, claims to have studied history, not realizing Petey is a history teacher. Petey takes Matt to a football practice, where Matt's skills as a goalie are humbled by defeat. At the Abbey, Bovar's hostility towards Matt escalates, prompting him to leave and visit Millwall's hangout, where he encounters Tommy Hatcher, their fierce leader. Although Bovar's future is uncertain after his release, the GC members are on their way to Manchester for a United Away day. Unfortunately, Bovar doesn't show up for the train journey, prompting Matt to express his eagerness to proceed regardless. Pete, however, warns of potential trouble with the Manchester firm and insists that Matt stay behind. Just as Pete makes this request, Bovar arrives, but Matt disregards the warning and boards the train anyway. Pete, aware of the danger ahead, 
contacts someone via his cell phone and learns that the Manchester firm is waiting for them at the station. With limited options, the group decides to stop the express train and continue their journey to Manchester by taxi. Struggling to find enough taxis, Matt devises a plan to hide in a truck's cargo container, with him sitting in the passenger seat. Pretending to be a film crew for a Hugh Grant movie, they outsmart the Manchester firm, win a fight, and escape unscathed. The police quickly arrive and arrest the Manchester firm, boosting the GC's reputation for bravery and audacity. Matt gains fame within the group, earning the nickname The Yank. In a voiceover, Matt reflects on his experiences, noting the thrill of danger despite feeling safe and admitting that he's grown accustomed to violence, finding it invigorating. Amidst the excitement, Matt undergoes a transformation from a casual dresser to a sleek, uniformed member of the GSC, even getting a tattoo to mark the change. However, just as he embraces this new identity, his father arrives, disrupting his newfound sense of belonging. Carl Buckner, portrayed as a man struggling with his children's lack of discipline, pressures Matt to return to school in the States. While having lunch with his father at the Times, Matt is spotted by a GSC member who informs Bovar of his presence. Bovar is furious upon learning that Matt is not only a journalist but also a spy. Meanwhile, the GSC members are excited about their upcoming quarterfinal FA Cup match. After Shannon informs Steve that Matt is actually a journalism student, Bovar intrudes on Pete's space and searches through Matt's laptop, discovering evidence of his writings about the firm. Steve confronts Matt at the Abbey, warning him about the risks of both journalism and association with the firm. Just as Steve is about to leave with Matt, he is recognized as the GC's famous founder, the Major. Steve recounts the tragic incident involving Millwall, where Tommy Hatcher's child was killed by GSC members' boots, leading to Steve's departure from the GC. Pete arrives at the Abbey with Bovar and begins to attack Matt, but Steve intervenes. Despite the altercation, Pete starts to trust Matt, angering Bovar further. Pete travels to Millwall to inform Tommy Hatcher that Matt is a journalist and that the Major has returned. Millwall arrives at the Abbey as chaos ensues. Steve is brutally attacked by Tommy with a broken bottle, but Pete and Matt manage to get him to safety and to a hospital. At the hospital, Bovar expresses remorse for his actions. Shannon, furious with Pete, blames him for involving Steve in the dangerous world of hooliganism. Matt reassures Shannon and begins to grasp the deadly consequences of seeking revenge. The doctors deliver hopeful news that Steve is expected to survive. Shannon decides to leave for Boston with her baby to find safety. Meanwhile, Pete arranges a confrontation with the Millwall firm at the wharf the following day. Despite being advised to stay home, Matt chooses to join the fight, aligning himself with the Assembly tribe for the GSC. The powerful Assembly, accompanied by their theme music, One Blood, symbolizes unity and standing firm, even when fighting not for reputation but for justice. A brutal and terrifying brawl, labeled a holy war, erupts. Tommy is hellbent on avenging his son's death by killing Pete. Pete nearly meets his end but is saved by Bovar's intervention. However, things take a grim turn when Matt foolishly calls out for Shannon, leading to her being chased by Tommy's lieutenant. Matt tries to defend her but suffers severe beatings. Pete urges Bova to save his brother's family, and they charge towards the Millwall henchman with Tommy in pursuit. As Tommy moves in to attack, Pete taunts him, provoking a vengeful assault. Both groups step back, but it's too late. Pete is already dead. The scene ends with an aerial view of Pete's lifeless body, surrounded by both firms, shocked and grieving the loss of their friend. Matt cries and throws himself over Pete's body. In a voiceover, Matt reflects on the lessons he learned from Pete to stand his ground and know when to walk away. The film concludes with a poignant epilogue, showing Jeremy in an upscale business club, being congratulated by his associates. He retreats to the bathroom to use drugs, only to be surprised by Matt's sudden appearance in a sleek black turtleneck. Matt reminds Jeremy of his promise to help him return to Harvard and plays a recording of Jeremy's confession. With one hand, Matt pins Jeremy against the wall, warning him not to resist. However, ultimately, Matt chooses to leave, drawing on the lessons he learned from Pete about life and death. The scene ends with Matt walking down a Boston street, singing I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles, joined by an unseen chorus of voices. The film closes with Matt shouting United and clapping his hands in unison with his invisible champions. And that's the end of this story.
Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.